Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. My review of Batwoman, episode 7. Okay, we're gonna have to have a conversation. This show has now devolved into a soap opera. This is a this is a CW soap opera. Uh, the superhero stuff is almost non-existent. I mean, it's really, really not there. You have a few stunts in this episode, but that's really it. This is really just, in my opinion, this episode is it. This is the one where we just go off the rails, we abandon the superhero angle. This is going to be a lesbian soap opera. Get used to it. So the episode starts off with the shadow shooter trying to take a shot at someone in an Italian restaurant across the street. Uh, but Batwoman is there to foil his plan, but she's really not even in the scene. They don't have a fight per se. She just uh, does a grappling hook thing and, and, and pulls him away from the window before he can kill anybody. Batwoman and Sophie have a quick dialogue where she's like, I know you're Batwoman. And she's like, no, I'm not. And blah, blah, blah. And then she's able to grapple all the conversation, which is something I wish I could do. Next, we have some lame training scene where she's in the Batcave and she's doing like Taibo. I don't know. It's just, you know, she looks like a 12-year-old boy and she's doing punches and kicks and a backflip. But, you know, it's, it's shadow boxing. There's, no, there's nobody there. There's no punching bag. There's no nothing. And, you know, she's not even sweating. It doesn't even look real. And, and Luke's watching her. And he just has this look on his face like he doesn't believe anything he's seeing either. And the rest of the episode is basically flashbacks to everything we've already seen. You know, guess what? She got kicked out of the military academy because she was gay. Okay, we knew that, but we're going to rehash it again. And the only thing we're going to learn new is that Kate's dad actually, for a second, spoke to Sophie about, listen, you gotta, I, I'm going to be honest with you. If you go in there and if you think you're going to get out of this, you think you're just going just gonna to walk in and say, love conquers all, it's not going to work. They're going to kick you out. And Sophie's like, well, did you tell Kate this? And dad, being a father who knows his daughter, says, listen, she's too headstrong. She, she's just going to go in there, guns blazing, burn the place down. She doesn't care. But you need to know this is how it is and sprinkled in the episode we have julie pennyworth who is actually alfred's daughter and of course her and kate also had a thing back in the day so and the way she meets up with julie is because there's a second attempt on asian scientist life now he was the guy in the italian restaurant that the the sniper took a shot at but missed and uh oh yeah by the way that bullet was uh was stuck in drywall and and it was so prominent that they, they actually you know they, they they framed it they framed the hole with the bullet still in I, it, it's got to be the most underpowered weapon I've ever seen. It didn't even penetrate drywall. So this second attempt on the Asian scientist's life is, is just, it's so pathetic. It's horrible. Batwoman is walking in the parking garage. Asian scientist is going to his car. And the car directly across, I mean, like, it's like four parking spaces down, you see the sniper crouch down with his, with his sniper rifle on the hood of the car. He could use a slingshot to kill the guy. And of course, in the exact same shot where we see Batwoman, Asian scientist guy, sniper, sniper. And of course, Julie's there to apprehend the sniper guy. Uh, so she she throws a, uh, I, I guess, a, a lasso around his legs. I'm not really sure. It's a rope of some kind. Her and Kate have a fight, and obviously the bad guy gets away. So a very pointless scene. And during the fight, Julie recognizes that Batwoman is Kate Kane. So now, if it, for those keeping track at home, there's five people in this in this show that now know who Batwoman is. And, of course, Julie goes back to the Batcave with Kate because, you know, her dad was uh, was Alfred, so it's all good. She makes a little joke about the Dino, the little dinosaur, and the Batcave. And her and Luke, of course, they know each other, so everything's cool, everything's fine. And like I say, there's minimal story to sort of move the, the plot forward. It's really all just undercut with flashbacks. Every time we get a little bit of story, we flash back to that same scene where we're rehashing you know, they were in love and they and they, they had an affair and they weren't supposed to because, you know, that was part of the rules of the academy. And then here's the letter that you got to sign. You got to say, hey, you didn't do that or we're going to kick you out, which I mean, listen, I not for nothing. You joined the academy. You knew this was a rule. You broke the rule. So, I mean, what, what do you think? You're just going to go in there and they're just going to change the rules for you. Like, like, I mean, you're in the wrong. I mean, listen, this is a, put the social stuff out of the way. You're in the wrong. OK. I mean, if you could also get uh, disqualified or kicked out if you, you know, if you skipped out and maybe had some drinks and got drunk, you know, left the campus. I mean, these rules exist for a reason. I mean, don't, I don't understand why you think you're special. So Kate decides she's going to go ahead and level with Sophie. They meet at the restaurant, the same restaurant we saw in the beginning of the episode. And Kate reaches her hands out to grab Sophie's hands to, to tell her something. You know, it's, just, it's almost as if two friends are, are, are about to have a moment where they're going to confide in each other. And the restaurateur, the guy that owns the restaurant, the manager, whatever, he sees this, automatically assumes they're gay, and demands that uh, Kate leave because, you know, homophobia. And of course, this scene plays out way too long. It could have it could have just been sort of implied, and that's it. But no, it's we've got to make some long statement. Sophie's sitting there the whole time. I'm thinking, Sophie, why don't you just say, hey, uh, we're friends. I'm married to a man. So what's the problem? But, you know, Kate storms out because she's got to make a statement about everything. 
And this is where Sophie tells Kate, listen, your dad actually told me that, you know, he gave me the skinny. If I was to go in and just say that, uh, you know, I love Kate and love conquers all and all that. I mean, that's fine, but I would have been kicked out of the Academy and I'm not rich like you from what they're telling us in the episode that this was their senior year. They were about to graduate. This was the weekend before they're going to graduate. And they were just sort of hedging their bets. Like, Oh, they're not going to wear the top two, you know, we're the top two candidates. They're not going to kick us out. Well, no, that's why the rules were there. And of course, Kate's pissed off that now she feels betrayed by her dad because her dad convinced Sophie to quit. And Sophie's like, no, he didn't convince me. He just leveled with me. He just cared about me enough to tell me the truth. Kind of something that maybe Kate should have done. So Kate walks away. Sophie goes back to work to basically level with Tyler, which I'm glad she actually did this. You know, Tyler's her husband, you know, the guy she's married to. And I'm glad she just, she leveled with him. Like, listen, hey, I had a thing with her, but it's over. So there's your one love triangle. Then you got Julie that's sort of, her and Kate had a thing, but so now it's like a, a love square for people for, I don't know. Cut to Wayne Tower where Luke and Julie and, and Kate are about to go, you know, in the secret uh, the secret uh, bookshelf swinging door thing. They're going to go down to the Batcave. And of course, Mary just pops in. And she's like, oh, where are you going? And they shut the door, but okay. <laughs> So now that's the sixth person. Now six, I mean, maybe she doesn't know that she's Batwoman, but she, okay, she's going to catch on. I mean, nobody's this stupid. Yeah, I, you can't write a character this stupid. She just saw the secret entrance. So so there's six. Oh, and by the way, did I tell you? I don't know, maybe I, maybe I skipped over this. but So it's at this point that we see Sophie go back to Kate's dad and tell dad, hey, guess what? Batwoman, uh, it's actually Kate. So it's at this point in the series, in episode seven, we have seven people. Well, we have six people for sure, and maybe there's that seventh person who's on the bubble. I mean, Mary's going to come around. We now have more people that know Kate is Batwoman that don't know that Kate's Batwoman. And then we have another flashback scene where after her and Kate broke up, she goes back in and, and there's some, uh, some, some captain taking away the award, you know, that Kate had on display, which is just weird that it would happen that fast. But okay, let's, for the sake of argument, let's say that, you know, she doesn't go to school here anymore. We're going to, we're going to remove every reference of her like that, which doesn't happen, but okay, it's fine. I mean, literally what you normally do is you graduate and then your, then your awards are posted, but whatever. And Cadet Sophie confronts the captain and she has this long monologue, how great Kate is and how great's wonderful. And, and Kate doesn't compromise and, and Kate set records. And oh, by the way, she got that award uh, after she was, she got completely plastered the night before or she was drunk on tequila. I'm thinking, what are you doing? I mean, even if she, even if Kate stayed, you know, they would take the award from her anyway. You can't do that. If you're going to these academies, that's one of the rules. You can't like leave campus and go get hammered, but okay, whatever. And the way she's talking to a superior, she's lucky they didn't kick her out for that. So then we have a scene in a warehouse where Julie actually puts on the bat suit and, you know, the idea is to, you know, let's fake out Sophie. Okay. So Sophie's in there and she's leading the team. And of course she's, you know, she, I don't think she's very qualified to lead this team. And I'll tell you why. Because when Sophie sees Batwoman, who she believes is Kate, she has this really touching moment where she holds her hand and then she leans in, you know, forehead to forehead and say, I can't lose you. I mean, I thought you, she, her gun was drawn. I thought you were on the lookout for the bad guy, you know? And as soon as you see Batwoman, you drop your entire guard, you leave everybody on the radio hanging and have a personal private moment with somebody. What are you doing? And then while that's going on, Kate walks in, you know, from, from behind her. And, and, you know, Sophie's like, well, what are you doing here? And Kate's like, I was going to ask you the same thing. No, 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 no. Kate, what are you doing there? It's the middle of the night. It's an abandoned building, and they're looking for the shadow shooter. What are you doing here? You know, with Batwoman in the same room, I think that Sophie, having any intelligence at all, would figure this out. Okay, all right. Well, okay, wait a minute. This, they're trying to pull a fast one on me. And before Sophie could point at the obvious, a blast comes out of nowhere and knocks Batwoman, Julie, through a brick wall out of the window. I mean, this is like four stories up. And she lands on the concrete, flat on her back. Because if we remember, there's a MacGuffin gun out there from last episode that Alice gave to the sharpshooter, shadow shooter guy, whatever, salad shooter. So for whatever reason, the thing that was supposed to penetrate the Batsuit armor didn't penetrate the Batsuit armor, but generated enough force to push her through a brick wall and throw her four stories out. It, but, but it didn't, I mean, it just, who cares? If I'm going to fall four stories and land flat on my back on concrete, I don't really care if the shot penetrated the bat suit. My, my bones are all broken. So the crows are there to apprehend Batwoman. They throw her in this, uh, this armored car and they take off. And then we have the slowest motorcycle chase scene I've ever seen in my life. Now, I know this is TV and I know it's a TV budget, but Kate, 
Kate jumps on her motorcycle and, and gives the, the, the armored car chase, okay? And she's weaving in and out of the slowest traffic possible. She pulls out her gun. She one-shots the front tire of the armored car. And, of course, the armored car swerves and hits a pile of debris, which flips it over. Two of the guards get out of the armored car. And, of course, she jumps off her motorcycle and beats them up. Now, as this scene is going on, she has her motorcycle helmet on to conceal her identity. And she's beating up the bad guys. She looks like she's 12 years old. She looks like a small child. The helmet on her head looks like an orange on a toothpick. This is some of the most unbelievable parts that I've seen in this entire show thus far. Then she opens the door without a key, whatever. And we find Julie inside and we confirm that uh, the shot didn't penetrate the bat suit. Then we show Alice and the Bunny Rabbit gang in the hideout. And she has a conversation with the shadow shooter. And he's pissed off because the MacGuffin gun that she gave him didn't penetrate the bat suit. They have an exchange that doesn't make any sense because I think the shadow shooter or the salad shooter was hired by somebody else and that person is going to be pissed off at Alice and Alice is like, I don't care. So he leaves with the MacGuffin gun and then she turns around and she reveals that, oh, she actually has the little shiny pointy shard. I don't know, the, what, the, the kyber crystal. I don't know. She has some kind of power source that's supposed to go in the MacGuffin gun to... I guess allow it to fire, but it fired without it, but it, it fired a non-lethal shot, but it was lethal enough to push Batwoman through a brick wall. It, none of this makes any sense. And then she's talking to it and she's like, see, see my, my sister, I protected you. I didn't, I didn't want you to die. What? You gave the bad guy a gun that was strong enough to push her through a brick wall and throw her out of a building four stories, but it wasn't powerful enough to penetrate the suit. What's the difference? And then we find out what the difference is because we see Julie and Kate back in the Batcave. Turns out Julie just has a broken rib. Everything else is fine. Don't worry, she's good to go. And Julie's agency has found out that the Shadow Shooter has uh, left Gotham with a MacGuffin gun and he's going somewhere. I don't know. She's and So now she has to leave uh, and, and go follow. So uh, she's gone for the episode. And uh, I'm sure she'll come back mid-season, in-season. I don't know. And it's in the final scene where we see that Kate has actually bought a piece of property. It's a, it's an abandoned building. Uh, it's very run down. It's derelict. And she bought this with, you know, the money she stole from Bruce Wayne to form her own real estate company. And who's ready? Who's ready for the name of the, uh, of the real estate company? Gotham Pride Real Estate. And, and as she's sort of cleaning up and dusting off, uh, pulling pulling the, the tarps off the furniture, Sophie comes in and, and, and gives her something. And Kate says, listen, I'm over you. Get out of here. And Sophie leaves. And then, uh, you know, Kate opens up the box and it's the metal that we saw that the captain was removing from the academy. And we got a little tear out of Ruby Rose. And that wasn't bad. And then stepsister Mary comes in to help out uh, Kate and they, they hang a big you know, rainbow flag on the window. And, uh, and uh, she says, yeah, I bought this building because the guy across the street kicked me out of his restaurant. The very expensive Italian restaurant is across the street from an abandoned building. I, that doesn't wash for me. I don't know. And she did this not for all the reasons she listed in the other episode where she talked about, we're going to, you know, we're going to revitalize the neighborhood and we're going to, we're going to bring affordable housing back. No, she's doing this so she can open a gay bar. And for our last little nugget of storytelling, we flash to Alice and the Bunny Rabbit gang in the secret hideout. And her dad shows up. Uh, but of course, it's not her dad. Mouse takes the mask off and it's Mouse. And Mouse was disguised as her father. But it's not really clear how long he was disguised as her father. Was he her father for the entire episode? Part of the episode? The end? Just the beginning? We have no idea. And the teaser for episode 8 actually shows uh, that they've got her dad captured. So I... I'm completely confused. I have no idea what's going on. So once again, everybody, a, another disappointing episode for Batwoman. Bad story writing. Uh, we're basically just devolving into a into a soap opera. We're we're going to have a lot of uh, of lesbian content where uh, gay pride, and we're going to stick it to the man. So all the virtue of being Batwoman is basically being flushed for you know this agenda that she has. She's obviously a woman who's still very scorned, very very hurt from Sophie. From, uh, from people rejecting the fact that she's gay, which I, this is 2019. You're not going to get kicked out of a restaurant for being gay. I'm sorry, even, even in the Deep South. So if you're looking for any kind of action in this episode, it's really not there. If you're looking for any sort of story that makes sense, it's also not there. If you're looking to be confused and, and preach to, well, this is your episode. Anyway, y'all, those are my thoughts. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comment section below. Uh, like if you like the video, subscribe if you like the content. Y'all have a blessed day. And if I have my sanity, I will see you next time.